Welcome to Weld.com. We are at Ferd USA in Milwaukee. Known for brushes, beer, cold wind. No, it's not that bad today. Anyway, we are here to do a uh, educational training for the staff of Weld.com. I know some of you are interested in abrasives. I certainly am. So we're going to head inside and learn some really cool stuff. We're in the hands-on training facility here at Ferd North America. I have Mr. John Thompson, National Technical Application Guru. Close you, enough. That yeah. works. That works, Bob. Well, that we've works. got we we want to this education you've been giving us on abrasives is extremely valuable, and I'm going to throw some stuff at you here and see how you react. We've got a piece of pipe here. We got a right nasty burr flashing from cut off wheel. I need to prep this. I need to weld it. Uh, with whatever method you know we choose, but then I kind of need to make a finish and take this weld off. So the first thing we need to tackle is, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm feeling this sharp burr on here. I need to remove that. I want to bevel it. I want to take this mill scale off inside and out. Okay. How do we go about doing stuff like that? What would be your conventional method? Let me ask in the beginning. Right now, you've got this. You've cut it off. You're in the shop. What's the first thing you pick up to go after? In, in my shop, yep. I would probably be interested in chucking it up in a positioner if I had that available to me um, and grabbing a flapper wheel or something and just kind of standing there and letting the thing turn. And Or if it was stationary and I was doing this mobile or remote, then I would go ahead and dress this and rake the, a bevel on it with a flapper wheel or something. Okay. For the majority of our viewers, probably the flap disc is going to be the most common item they're going to, they're, they're going to experience and use. Some people will use a hand tool. It takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. Other ways that are come in with a flap disc and be able to come in and stuff for a flap drum. And so, for instance, something like this which will fit inside the pipe and when you're running it. Now you can get rid of all the inner burr and that inner ridge that the burr creates and it's very quickly. Man, I've used boxes of those things. You know what happens to me? What's that? It gets in there and it does its thing for a few seconds and then it kind of like loads up. It just glazes over. It's not cutting anymore. I'm sitting over there roundy, roundy, roundy. But it just it just floats on top of this material. Well, one of the things is, and we're, we talked about grain, or we're going to be talking more about grain, especially with taking off scale and taking off some of the other parts. Aluminum oxide or zirconia flap disc, very common, mm -hmm. but both of those are impact grains. And so you're trying to take a real sharp edge and kind of beat it down with the grain. And what happens, of course, is you start to rip up the flaps because the grain itself isn't working. This particular one is made out of silicon carbide. And silicon carbide is a very, it isn't an impact grain. It comes in, it picks away very quickly. So it's going to be great for taking off the outside here and getting the mill scale off and the inside. And so when you go back so and forth, it won't load up. It's it not going to glaze and sit there and float on top. Just going to want to eat. Plug it in. I got to see this. Okay. So, so the first thing I'm going to do is probably reach in here and spin this burr and get this mill scale off the inside. I don't care about this flashing weld. And then I want to roll this around the outside right. to prep my weld area. So you're going to use a toothbrush and you're going to use a, a activity and you're going to use an activity and stuff of drawing. When you're coming to the outside here, you're going to draw against the rotation of the wheel. Okay. All right. When you're using this, you're going to actually go in and out like a toothbrush. And the reason you're going in okay. and out is now you don't groove off the flap wheel and start tearing it all apart. And it's very aggressive when you're going back and forth using the whole face of the wheel. Don't don't go in any kind of a you go in a circle what happens is initially that's like a that's like a razor knife in there and it cuts into the flaps and now when you move them sideways if you, you do a little bit all it does is rip up your flap wheel now interesting the problem with this is that i just taught you a way to use less flap wheels okay but we're more than happy to sell you as many flap wheels as you want <laughs> if you use them wrong so we're going to try using them right and i'll just take the hit on how many i use uh, Hand me my face shield back there. Let's put that on for safety along with your glasses and your hearing protection. All 
So the beauty is it's cleaned up. We'll get rid of one by the face. But you'll notice you didn't groove off the flat because you used the whole face by going back and forth that way instead of going to the edge itself. And it chewed that milska. Now that flashing where the where the pipe the actual seam, together. the actual welded seam. I'm not too worried seam. about that. That's not. It, and realistically and stuff, can you can it hold it there and you can take that down. Absolutely. Let me do that. So now where you were going back and forth inside the pipe and you've got your scale cleaned off. Mm -hmm. Now what I want you to do is I want you to pull that disc while it's going around, okay, so that you clean off the outside edge. You just want to now clean when you're off. saying pull, this way? Yep. I thought we were going. Well, it's the opposite direction of the wheel. The wheel's spinning this way, so you're going to be going this way. Right. Okay. That didn't take very long. Nope. And the flap disc itself and such, you don't take much material. The biggest problem with flap discs is they always try to use it just that way and you wind up grooving them and the flaps tend to tear. The whole idea is it's just procedure. When it's ID work and you're trying to take it, you wind up go against by using the edge, the whole face of the, of the flap disc. Okay. And you wind up getting it more even here because you haven't put grooves into the disc itself. Okay. Now, we're on to the next problem. Yes, sir. I need to kind of prep this for welding. And I had talked about, you know, my normal thing, be grab a flapper disc or, mm -hmm. and, you know, a lot of times I'll use it flat and rotate it around there. What do you have that's quick, simple, repeatable, different? If you have one or two to do, it might be more cost effective to stay where you're at with the flap disc because you're there. But if this is something that you're doing on a regular basis, something that you're working with all the time on a regular basis, what we managed to do is we managed to make a beveling burr. Now, because we know we know it need a couple of different angles depending on the type of material, we make them in 30 degrees and they have a bearing on them. And the whole idea is that the bearing, when you're making the cut with the burr, the bearing itself actually rides on the material to keep you from cutting too deep into the material. Okay. We bake them in 30 degrees. We also have them available in 45 degrees. The beauty behind this is that if you have, and a lot of people, guys have in their shops already, a small quarter inch collet die grinder. So they're running about 20, 25,000 RPM. They use it for a lot of different things, mounted stones, other carbide burrs, things like that. Well, rather than making you go out and buy a brand new tool, We've designed these specifically to work in the existing quarter-inch collet power tools that are on the market today. Cool. And the reason we did is sometimes the, the consumable isn't expensive, but what you gotta have to run it will just break the bank, right. okay? So that's really why we set it up and stuff the way we did. So now we take these, either one that you want, and we actually mount them. In this case, this is an air tool. We actually mount them in a standard collet type of air tool. And then we've got this floating bearing. And that's separate from the, from the collet. It just slides in between that. And what this does is this, when you come in to do the cutting, this bearing out here is gonna rub right on your face okay. that you've made. This one's going to go down to the surface, and that's going to give you the guide for how far in and how far down that this, that this uh, is actually going to cut. So it's, all you do is push a little bit in and down until this one contacts, and then start pulling then the card like where you go. router bit after that. That's exactly right. What you have so, is you so have a handheld feel, bit. When I feel this riding on the pipe, and I've got my depth of cut, my bevel is established, then I'm feeling both of these at the same time? Yep. Well, let's give it a ride. Uh, that's what it's here for.
Well, that one looks pretty good to me. Um, that's about the root face that I'll run on this schedule of pipe. So let's do the other one. Now let's take a look. You've not only cleaned all the mill scale inside, all the mill scale outside, but actually the face now from this cutter, you have not embedded anything. So the abrasives that you have with the flap disc and such and some of the, the, the uh, backing material and stuff that, that does leave residuals or could, you have a really clean piece of material to butt together and start welding. Okay. We had our tube beveled and uh, we fit it up. We did a TIG root. I'm gonna go ahead and just do a, a fill pass on here to bring weld metal up so John can show me how to finish this off so that it should be smooth, no dips. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this off with a TIG cap. Okay, John, quick application here. Um, couple of tubes, spliced them together, just did it with TIG, normal stuff. Now I'm down to, um, I wanna dress these off clean, okay? My normal thought, my normal stuff that I've been doing all along, uh, definitely flapper wheel, but to take heavy stock off, uh, quarter inch grinding wheel, lay it down flat, come back, flapper wheel, and try to do the same thing to knock this thing down and blend it in. Okay. What are your thoughts? Retrain me here if I need retraining. <laughs> what's the, what's well, the cool stuff? First of all, let's take a look at that grinding wheel. Okay. All right. The first thing with a grinding wheel is you never pull a grinding wheel because the human body, when you pull a grinding wheel, you come down flatter. And so when you come down flatter, what happens is you wear this edge mm -hmm. quite a bit further, and then the edge of this starts breaking up and throwing it away. It's called straw heading. So in this application, to use a hard wheel, and you should always push a wheel, when you try to push this wheel, you're going to wind up with a lot of digging and gouging. Right. It'll bite. So, you right. feel it. So it's a great product. Not for a round application I like this. You. All right, so we're gonna put that one and we're gonna let that one sit on the shelf. Option two. You always pull a flap disc. You never push a flap disc. When you push a flap disc, you went out and spent your hard earned money on this and you push a flap disc and the first thing you do is wear about that much of it away. Mm -hmm. The rest of it looks brand new and then you got to sit there and sometimes you throw them away. Sometimes you get so frustrated you'll say, you know, I'm going to save those because someday I'm going to use them. I do. And rarely do you actually wind up using them. So because they're not flat anymore. So the deal is if you pull a flap disc, you're actually wearing from the inside out and you'll get the longest life. But now we're gonna look at it a different way. You've got a product that's, that you're pulling that you should be pulling. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna take a concept and a look at w w how much of the material you're touching. When you're pulling a flap disc, the only contact to the real material you have, if you're the perfectly stuff that flat, I accidentally that I want that off you of there. want well, off I of there. Want, I don't want to get into this yet. Well, you may not want to, but, but the will. problem is, remember, you have your grinder here mm -hmm. that's running at 160 miles an hour, and you're going to come here and you have the contact of about two flaps, and that contact of two flaps is fine, but you've got about three degrees each way at 160 miles an hour as you're working this thing through. And it isn't difficult <laughs> to give yourself a whole new set of stripes out mm, here. I think I've done that before. I, you know, I may have come up once or twice. <laughs> well, what's the alternative? The alternative is procedure. Okay. If I turn the flap disc this way, I now come across parallel to the weld, and if I do get a couple of degrees off, I'm still in the very area that I want to be able to remove. And now, I'm touching a lot more surface area out here. Absolutely. I can use the full, what is it, about an inch or so, let's call it an inch. Yep. So I can miss this way and this way, this way and this way, and I'm still on my target. You're still on the target. So. 
I want to knock this down and blend it into the tube. My, do I always want to be rotating this around the tube? Or rotating the tube direction? if you can, or actually just moving it as a mass. So you're here, and then you're moving this as a mass. You're not rotating this as much as you're keeping this parallel, but moving it as a mass. Remember, this is turning. Right. So you don't have to do this. The only time you have to do this is when you haven't paid your electrical bill and you don't have any power oh, and you're yeah. trying to do this by hand, okay? Yeah. But as long as you make that monthly check sent out, they'll give you all the power you want to run this thing at the speed you want to do. So you'll be just fine. Mm, okay. Is there an option three? Well, here's the thing. Is that the finish you really want? A 40 grit flap disc no, or a 60 grit is, uh, flap I'm disc? I'm interested in 40 because I want to eat stock. I'm, I'm not in a hurry, but I want to, you know, time is money, so I want to do this fairly okay, quickly. Okay, so that's step but one. But that's not necessarily, I'm not, I'm not going to paint a 40 finish. So if I want to paint this railing, it's got to be down smoother than, way smoother than 40. So you're going to knock down that weld and get it all shaped with that 40. And now you have to use something different. I have to go to another step. Right. And that means you got to take more material. But because you took this well down 100% to the surface, when you get taking more material pretty soon, when you look at that pipe, you're going to have that little excess material that you took off. And the only reason you took that off is because you had to get the I scratches had to, go to, to the point. Two. I'll tell you what. Trust the fat guy. We don't work that hard. Okay? Okay. All right. So what we did was we said, why don't we take step number one and step number two and put them together. So while you're running at the same speed, you're knocking down the weld with this, and behind it is your secondary step that's buffing out its own scratch. Is there a third step in there, or is that a binder? That's actually, you this dark is... dark brown, you right. got red with grit, and that's an aggressive grit. Well, you want to get this done, you I said. Do. Okay. Uh, what's the what's the behind it? The brown, dark brown. The dark brown is actually the abrasive material, and the light brown is what is called the screed. It's the material that holds the abrasive material into place. Okay. So, in essence, what you're doing here now is we're going to come the proper way, this way parallel to the weld, but you're getting two mechanical actions going at the same time. Show me how. Fair enough. Now, while I know you'd love to run this at 160 miles an hour and have a good old time with it, what we're going to do is we're going to use our variable speed, and we're not going to run it at full speed. We're going to actually run it instead of 11,000 or 10,000 RPM. This particular one at high speed is 11,000 RPM. We're actually going to run this right around 9,000 RPM. And there's a very big reason for that. With <clears throat> anybody's segmented flap disc, the majority of them, the backing that is holding onto the abrasive grain is made out of a polyester blend. Some are cut full cotton, but the majority are polyester blend. If you build up too much friction, polyester, as you well know from your 1970s dance outfit, the polyester leisure suit actually starts to burn a little bit. Uh -huh. So in reality and stuff, what you want to do is you tend to tear the disc up even more. So what we're doing with that polyester is by slowing it down a couple thousand RPM on the variable speed tool, we keep the, we keep the temperature down from friction. Mm -hmm. You'll double the life of the disc. Am I being too easy with it? No, you're not. As a matter of fact, do I need to lighten up on it? The easiest thing that, well, actually, it's not feathered in. Once she starts to feather in, if you look, you barely took yeah. all of the rough grain off. Once she starts to feather in, I want you to go a little bit slower in rate of travel. Okay. Okay? Because you don't have to go real fast with it. Just a little slower in rate of travel. And what you're going to be doing, you've already got this blended. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the beautiful part behind this that if we take even like a, a straight edge piece of material, you're going to see this is now sitting just nice and even. But I need to be like this. Well, we're slightly we're slightly dished here, so yeah, you want to, and we did this did this so that you could pick that tool up a little bit. But remember, you're you're trying to come not that way as much as you're trying to come parallel to the weld with the part of the disc that's going to touch it. Just so like that. Okay. 
I want you to stand where I'm at so the camera can get a real good shot and I want you to come with this and you're going to send those sparks right over directly away from the parallel of the weld itself because you can control that with the disc. Over here, that way. Yep, but you're going to send all your sparks, you're going to turn this in such a way, okay, and the only way you can do it is to be using this part of the disc so you send the sparks that way. If you turn this thing more this way, you're going to send the sparks that way. It's the beauty by using a circular disc. Sparks that way. There you go. Perfect. Now you'll see what you're doing. It doesn't, you don't have to bear into it because it's doing all the cutting it wants to do. The idea is by watching where the spark trail is heading in the shop, uh -huh. that's telling you what part where you have to just turn your wrist. To, you can put those sparks in any direction you want to put them into. What we're trying to do is we're trying to sit there and you're controlling it. You're going a little bit slower so that you're not bouncing all over. You've got a two-part wheel that's doing all the work. All you're doing is adjusting it and by watching your spark trail, you're putting it in the right position of the product. And if you take a look at the product, you'll see we're evenly wearing the coated abrasive all the way through. Um, I'm noticing this is working better as it wears a little bit. Absolutely. The, the, the I mean, best part of finishing is the abrasives set themselves in. Right. If you want to look at performance when they're brand new, the performance goes way up and then what we look at is this line. Not the initial attack, right. but how it settles in and slowly wears down by as it loses diameter. That's called the performance of the wheel and the full life of the product. You can get products that take off and then fall down oh, real quick. It took off. I could feel it when I first started it. Um, interesting product. Quick, simple. I'm looking over the top that we were concentrating on and I'm I'm where I need to be. Yeah. Give it in a coat of step. paint walk away. In, one, in one step. In one step. Very nice. Didn't we was up that many calories? No. Still feel good? I'm still, we're all I'm still round. We're all, but there we go. Cool. So a couple of thousand RPM makes a difference too. We're, can we slow it down even more or is that not suggested? You can, but now you start to actually do things where when you get a little too slow, you start to actually put a deeper scratch back in because the slower speed okay. allows it to sit in there and put a deeper furrow. So there's this medium line of fast enough so that you get the finish that you want and slow enough so you get the control that you want without building up a lot of excess heat on the part due the friction. Now you've got the sweet spot. No different than welding. You can put in way too much heat, yeah. you can put in not enough heat, and when you get into the right range, everything flows into, into place. Very educational. I think this is much needed in our, in our viewership. I know that over the years you, you run across some stuff and if you get that right speed, that right temp, everything works just like welding. Just like welding. It really all goes together. It, a lot of times, People treat it in segments. They treat it as, I know how to weld, grinding is not a big deal. I don't grind, with, or I know how to grind. I, I'm not learning how to weld because I can always try and make it look nice. Mm -hmm. When you get the whole picture together, that's when the product goes out the door and you make the most money. But welding is only one-fifth or one-sixth of the whole process. True. We have to start out with a design. We have to lay it out. We have to cut it, fit it, prep it, prep it, fit it, weld it, and then finish it. So actually you have the prep and the finish where abrasives are involved. You know, I hate, I hate to tell you this, but uh, quite frankly, for all the welding you're going to do, you get to come to me twice. <laughs>
That's what keeps you round. Well, that's about <laughs> it. That's what keeps the calories coming home. Right. Absolutely. Appreciate it. That it was, it was very educational for me. I hope you found that educational. I certainly did. It's like a retraining for me, and I learn stuff every day. So I appreciate all this. Appreciate Ferd for having us here. Great product line. You know, learning a lot. You've got some innovative products, but you, the technique on how to use everything is extremely beneficial. End up saving money in the long run. That's what we're here for. Thank you, sir. And we're going to be here with John at Ferd for the next couple of weeks doing a lot of training, doing a lot of product application. Thanks for watching Weld.com. Please subscribe and check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Man, you need to turn around and get a picture of this head behind you. This is cool. Man cub is like... We had been filming all day long for about 10 hours straight. We were both just goofy as all get out. We had been to barbecue that day. It was probably 9.30, 10 o'clock that night. I don't know what time. We were doing this horrendously long video on running all these different electrodes. He has a camera over here and a camera in front of me. Normally when I get up out of the chair to adjust the machine, he turns the camera off. I went over and I'm standing in front of this machine and I laid out a beauty. I mean, it was a veritable bomb. He's got the headphones on and I hear him go, Oh, what? Yeah. He's <laughs> over there and... I said, do you hear that? And he goes, it scared me. Apparently the camera behind me was picking up the audio. He's got it somewhere. You got that somewhere on your, the fart, the fart blooper? Yeah, I got it. There he, yeah, there he, I'm, I'm sure he's, I'm sure he does. He's, he's saving it for when uh, you start to threaten him or something, and you'll pull that out and say, hey. Oh, no, it's it's on Facebook. <laughs> it's the man has no <laughs> There's some stuff on Facebook that's got <laughs> millions of views. Well, how do you think I save it? I put it on social media so it'll never go away. That's nice. <laughs> Why is he turning red? Boogers. And swuss. Well, now you're trusting the other fat guy, huh? <laughs> Not as big as me, buddy. <laughs> I, 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 we'll work on those calories together. You don't own a polyester leisure suit? You no, little surprise. Where did that come from? <laughs> God. <laughs> You must have looked in the closet this morning. I just saw that little bit of fear to come out of your eyes. Well, you know I still have my leisure suit. Yep. Okay, you can edit that out too. You'll have a lot of cut and paste.